Hey, it's Jeff Dickerson and welcome to this channel. Now on this channel, I'm gonna show you my journey of growing my investment portfolio, but not only that, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna grow a portfolio for my two daughters, Georgia who's 21, Emily who's one, and you can see all of that on this channel. Now if you check out the videos on the channel, you can see a recent auction purchase. We've already got Georgia, her first property at the stage of recording this, and you can see all the updates as we go through that renovation project and see how do we get our money back on that deal. So do subscribe and hit the bell notification. Now this video I wanna talk about how to grow a buy to let portfolio, the things that you need in order to be successful with your buy to let. Now any questions that you've got, or even if it's just to say thanks or some sort of comment, do comment below, that helps me greatly with YouTube. Now to have a portfolio, the most important thing that you've got to start with is deals and leads, right? If you don't have deals, then you're not really going to be able to grow that portfolio at all. And when you get a good deal or a good lead, money will come, right? You will be able to partner with people uh, and all sorts of things will happen when you get the good deal. So the most important thing is getting the deal. So let's have a look at how we get deals and how you can get deals more importantly to start your journey and build that portfolio. Now, the first one is to build a relationship with agents, right? You need to be on the phone, speaking with agents, tell them what you're looking for and just start building that relationship and rapport. It's not just gonna be one phone call. It might be one call every few weeks for a period of a few months until you get some good deals coming your way because they get bombarded with people building calls, uh, build, uh, calling them even uh, to build relationships and it's your job to make sure you stand out over those other investors. So you must start building that relationship with the agents. Next is look for direct to vendor deals. You can do that um, and we're gonna put some content out on that on this channel, but you can do that by looking on places where people don't wanna sell through agents. Things like Gumtree, for example, or you will see people that will put their own for sale board up because they wanna save on agency fees for some reason. Now, that is good for you because you can build that relationship and that's really, really important. Now, you could also go to networking meetings. You'll find landlords that are now got tired that are looking to offload some of their portfolio. And if you build that relationship and rapport with them, get a deal from them, maybe eventually they'll offer more deals to you in the future. So that's very, very, very important. Another thing is to get in with some sources. So anytime I see a sourcer and you find sources really in Facebook groups, there's tons of property Facebook groups. We have one in the description here and network with those sources. A lot of them build email lists, so they might have a mini website, for example. Anytime I see any of those sorts of things, I always put my details in because I wanna see the deals that they've got. Maybe the deal they've got today is not for me, but in the future, they might get an incredible deal that's right in the patch that I wanna invest in, and that is important, that you build that relationship with those sources, and maybe try and get a relationship with them so when they get a good deal, they come to you first. Show them that you're serious and you're ready to go, because all at the end of the day they wanna do is secure a good buyer for that deal. So if you can build that relationship, that will make a big, big, big difference. Next is auctions. Auctions is a great place to get deals because you're getting the property at the price that the market really dictates. When you go through agents, obviously the person selling has emotion attached to that. So they wanna get a really high price for their house. They don't negotiate so much at the beginning unless the property sits there for a while. And right now in the market, it is a seller's market. Deals are going very, very fast. But stuff that goes into auction, it's just black and white, it's numbers that people are looking at. Maybe they're repossessions or someone that's looking to just get their cash out of a deal really, really fast. It's very black and white, people are looking at it and they're saying, you know what, that's what I'll take for that property and it will either sell or it won't. And you know for a fact that whatever you bid is pretty much what the market dictates that that's valued at because someone will have bid just below you and they were willing to just to pay slightly less than what you were. So auctions are a good place to do deals and we do deals in auctions at the moment. Now, next is money. So once you've got the lead, you need some money. So how can you get that? Well, savings, obviously. You can save uh, your, your own income uh, and generate a pot of cash that way. That's a great way to start. 
that's how everyone starts really. Um, next is bridging, right? So when you buy from an auction, it's kind of a cash purchase. It's seen a, as a cash purchase, but you don't actually need the actual cash. You might just get something called a bridging loan, which is a temporary loan. We've got content on the channel. Again, if you wanna check out what a bridging loan exactly is, but it's a short-term loan. The interest is slightly higher, but it allows you to purchase properties fast. They pretty much lend to most people. That, um, you will have to put a deposit down, uh, but it's a very quick way, much faster than a mortgage. So it allows you, if you wanted to buy from auction, to complete. But if you do go to auction, do speak to a bridging lender before you go to the auction to make sure you tick all their boxes. Next is obviously mortgages, right? So I have a portfolio of properties already, and sometimes I will release equity from them. I'm just doing that at the moment. In Hastings, I've got two properties. I've just released, how much did we get out? Over 100 grand from those uh, by refinancing. It actually reduced our payments because we've got a better interest rate. We got 100 grand into our bank, uh, and that allowed us to buy the auction property that we've just bought for Georgia. Right. And so using mortgages to refinance and release equity is a good way. Obviously, you can buy a property with a mortgage. Right. You can use a standard buy to let. You'll have to pay a deposit, obviously, but that allows you to do that, too. And so that's very, very good thing to be doing. Uh, JVs. Trust me, if you get a good deal. So if you get a house like I just did at auction that's potentially worth 100 grand and I got it for 60, people will lend you money for that. I was fortunate enough that I didn't need that. But I know a few people that would have lent me that money if I needed to because the deal was safe, because there's so much room for error in that that they would really, really feel comfortable lending on something. Something that's worth 100 and you get it for 60, of course people are going to be more likely to lend you money on that. So JVs are very good. You can find JV partners at networking, property networking events. Family and friends are very good JV partners as well. Everyone wants to invest in property. And if you've got the deal, that's what some people struggle with. Some people struggle, they don't have the money, but there's lots of people that have tons of money, right? And so you can really negotiate here and be the person that gets the deal. You can marry that up with someone that's got the money and that's a great relationship for both people. And a lot of people do very great with that. Now you can also use crowdfunding. These days, crowdfunding is in business and it's in property as well. So if you Google property crowdfunding, there's tons of people that will lend you money out there. And that can be really, really positive way to really get some more money uh, and grow your portfolio even faster. So crowdfunding is a good way to do that. Next, you need a team of people. If you don't have the right people in your property journey, it's going to be 10 times harder. Now, you can get a mortgage on someone like Money Supermarket or somewhere like that. But the problem is mortgages get stuck at various points, right? And a broker will cost you a few hundred pounds. They compare the whole market like Money Supermarket, but where they're different is they are the ones that push the deal along. They make sure that it doesn't get stuck because if the money doesn't come, the deal doesn't get complete, whoever you're buying from might get scared and pull out of that deal, right? And that happens quite often. 10 years ago, I had it. I nearly bought a four bedroom house in Surrey. And on the day that we were gonna exchange, somebody else had a finance problem and the whole chain collapsed and we didn't get that deal. Right, and that was really frustrating because that's worth a ton of money now. I really wish, wish that I got that at the time. Uh, and so really make sure that you get a good broker that you can work with, that you can call, that can push the deal to completion. Next, you need builders, right? Uh, I've done some content videos on how to find good tradespeople, but they're really important, right? It's it, The better way to make money in property is to find something that needs some work and do it up because then you add value uh, and then you can recycle your deposits faster and get more deals, right? And so you need to look for people that are really good at their trade, available and can work to tight deadlines. And to go and check out the other videos that I've made on that stuff, because that's very, very important that you get a good building team. And then try and invest in the same area, because then you can use the same trades people. It's difficult to keep finding new people all the time, right? And then agents. Uh, we mentioned it at the top here. It's the last thing as well. You need to build a good relationship uh, with agents. They're very, very important to 
than renting out your property or selling it again, if that's what you're looking to do as a flip. Uh, and so I can't underestimate uh, or overemphasize more the importance of building a good relationship with a local agent. When you've got that relationship, that's really what's gonna help you rent that property faster. So when a tenant comes in, you're the property that they show first. That's very, very key to your success as an investor. So look, let me know your thoughts. Have you got a bright elect property? Have you bought that sort of stuff already? Uh, do comment below. Do subscribe to the channel. Remember, we're on a journey to build my daughter's a portfolio and grow mine. I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Next Monday, I'm out on site, so I'll be making some videos there. Subscribe and hit the bell. And last thing, go and check out this last video here. It's gonna pop up on the screen right now. And go and check out the video of the recent auction purchase that I did, every single step along the way, all the due diligence. It's a longer video, it's an hour long, but it's very, very detailed, and it's gonna help you a ton so you can figure out how to get good deals at auction. That's it from me, I'm James Nicholson. Stay blessed, and I'll see you guys soon. Go and check that video out right now. Cheers, guys.